Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unboxed, and today we're gonna to take a very special look at basically unreleased software at this point. It is Chrome OS 70 running on the Pixelbook. It is in dev channel, but there are no flags here. This is all stuff that is rolled out to the dev channel, and we would expect to roll all the way down to the stable channel by about mid-October, and if that date sounds kind of familiar, That'll be just a couple weeks after Google's hardware event on October 4th, and we're fully expecting to see a few new Chromebooks there, specifically one that looks to be a detachable tablet sort of device by the name of Nocturne at this point. We expect it to be part of the Pixelbook family. And so we're seeing all these changes come up and, and start to show up on the Pixelbook currently and actually on the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 as well, and maybe a handful of other devices. We're not even sure at this point. This is such new news. But what we're seeing most of, the, the differences and the changes in the new software we're seeing all work and help tablet mode for Chrome OS. And so we wanna look through some of these changes. We want to show you some of them on camera because this is the largest update I think I've ever seen since I've had a Chromebook. Usually they update a few things here and a few things there and maybe some flags and that kind of stuff. But this time around, they have overhauled the tablet experience on this device and we wanna get in and show you all the new things. Okay, so we're going to talk through, there's a ton of changes, as I said in the open. There's a ton of changes here, so we're going to talk through them kind of piece by piece and work through basically from the simpler changes that are maybe less interesting to the more interesting and more drastic changes as we move along. So stick with us throughout this video. So first up is the Files app. It looks pretty similar here, but you'll notice on the left side over here, we've got some things that are in a different order. So we've got Google Drive, instead of being up top, it's now down at the bottom and kind of like your other mounted files over here. So now your galleries of images, video, and audio are up top. We've got your files down here, uh, so you can see your downloaded folders, but you can also see all of your play files. So those would work for any app that you install that actually writes to any part of the disk. They'll show up in here. I don't have a ton here because I don't have a ton of Android apps installed at this point. We literally just moved this thing to dev in order to see all these changes. Additionally, you would see the Linux app files here as well. So if you're working with any kind of Linux app, uh, I, again, uh, look forward to the day where I get to use Inkscape on a regular basis with Linux apps. I would have to work uh, with those files over here at this side, but they would be there and easy to get to completely integrated into the file system. And then you move down to Google Drive, which behaves as exactly like it used to. It's just moved down to the bottom now. Additionally, over here, now we have our show all play folders. So if I uncheck that and we look at our play files, we just see the basics. And so when I check that, now we get all of the things that would be stored here via any apps that you have on your system. You can show hidden files, which I don't think I've got any of those. Uh, and then add new service, which is where you would go to do an SFTP or file system for Dropbox, for instance. And when you click that, the same thing comes up as it used to. It's just now, instead of being over here in the file picker, it's over in the menu where it feels like it kind of belongs. And so that's really it for the file system, but it's some nice changes. And the files app is one of the pieces of Chrome OS that needs to keep getting updated. And so it's nice to see them starting to tweak some of these options on it. So now the next small change, uh, but it's, pretty drastic as far as the way it looks is the wallpaper picker. So we've talked about this quite a bit uh, over the last few months. We've seen it coming. It's been in like canary and that kind of stuff. But when I right click here, you can tell the menu's different. You got these nice rounded corners. We're going to see tons of stuff that mimics the look and feel of Android P or Android Pi uh, on phones. If, so if you have a phone that has it, a lot of this stuff's going to start feeling kind of consistent to you. So here's where you would auto hide your, sh your shelf, uh, set your wallpaper, and then you can change your shelf position. So for sake of the next piece of this, I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to the left, but let's look at the wallpaper picker real quick. And you can see now it brings up this nice new material design, familiar if you've had a Google phone or you've used the Google wallpaper app. A lot of these wallpapers are the same wallpapers. You can now do a daily refresh. So you just click this in whatever uh, category you choose. You click that and you'll get a new wallpaper each and every day choose the wallpaper you want, and boom, it's set. So it's pretty simple, works exactly like you think, and there's lots and lots of wallpapers. They add more, and they take some out as time goes by, but it's it works just like the one did before. There's just a better selection uh, and some better aesthetics overall to the wallpaper picker. So let's talk about the shelf and the settings tray. And so, um, uh, I had this over here for a particular reason because before we get and talk about what they've changed here, 
The notifications and the way that they stack make a lot more sense for the users that really like to have the entire shelf over on the left or the right because now everything stacks vertically. So the notifications sit right on top of your system tray and kind of stack this way versus having two separate pop-outs going on here that was kind of awkward before. But for the sake of the rest of this video, I like my shelf position to be on the bottom. So um, we're going to move it back down here for now. So if you take a look at the new settings tray, you can A, see that it's darked out now, but if you look really closely, it's actually kind of the same blur as the application tray has been for a little while. You can see your background through it just ever so slightly. And so it's just a really nice, uh, a nice effect that they've carried over, not just there, but in these kind of toast settings as well. Again, it's, it's probably difficult to tell on camera, but you can see the ever slight parts of your background through that and through like the keyboard brightness. Same thing, it's kind of got this uh, slight opacity that you can actually see some of your background through. It's just a nice touch, it looks really nice. And then as you look at this, when we slide these up and down, or you can click on your mouse here, hopefully you're seeing a lot of the similarities again to Android P and I've got my pixel right here and you can actually see as I drag this down and drag this up, all the similarities going on here. I mean, the icons are the same, round circles, dark backgrounds, the same way they animate. Google clearly is taking this update and moving lots of things, all the good things, just like they've said they were gonna do, all the good things from Android, and they're kind of pulling those things slowly but surely, and you're gonna see as this video goes on, more and more of that stuff. So in addition to some of the other tray options, so with the, you know, set wallpaper, that kind of stuff, getting this new menu treatment, all of your icons in your shelf actually get the same menu treatment. Now most of the stuff I have up here, these are all either PWAs or they're websites that are set up for shortcuts. And so you can kind of see when we long press those, you get a nice new menu here. And it says new window, so I can click that for new window, but I get my option over here whether I want a new tab or a new window. And so I've set my messages to be new window, it's gonna pop up in a new window, as you would expect. And additionally, they've added, so either with a right click, two finger click, or a long press on Android apps, just like you would on a phone, if you long press those apps, you kind of get some extra little settings. Same thing goes here. So now you get, with Google Play Books, I get not only to open or unpin it, now I get these little extras here, so shop or library, which is again, the same thing you would see on a phone. You would long press those things in your launcher, and have those extra icons. So uh, if you have a messaging app, for instance, you can long press it and it'll bring up the, the option to go ahead and create a new message or it might bring up your uh, most recently used contacts. And so lots of cool little things going on just in the shelf and the icons in the, in the tray right now. Um, everything's looking a lot more Android and behaving a lot more like Android. All right, now we're gonna move on to the part where things get pretty interesting and pretty drastically different than what they've been. So we're not just gonna be talking about small little menu changes and stuff. We're talking about some pretty big UI overhauls here. So if you remember the app launcher, probably on the current Chromebook you're using right now, when you bring that thing up, you get all your icons kind of centered in the screen and it looks small and a little odd, honestly. Uh, that is not the case anymore. So I'm going to bring up just the peaking part of the launcher. And so now we have the arrow up top. We have the Google search here. And then basically these little uh, probably AI driven, maybe some machine learning driven uh, suggestions here. So it could be a, a, a website you've been on recently or that it thinks you normally would visit or an app you've just recently opened. It's going to be similar to what you see again on the Pixel phone uh, whenever you I either go into multitasking mode or you slide your app tray up. There's some favorites up there at the top and those things change based on the time of day or your behavior, or, uh, who knows. You can also see some slight curvature uh, to the sides here. They haven't figured out the transparency it looks like uh, around the corners of that, but clearly this whole thing is gonna have that kind of new curved Google pill shaped thing going on. And you can even watch, as I bring this up, you can watch the corners there. If you look really closely, they'll slowly curve themselves back out and square up to meet the screen. And you probably have noticed something very different now. You have this huge grid that fills the screen and kind of looks a lot more um, uh, native. It looks like it fits on the screen and makes sense here instead of having some little bitty grid here in the middle. Um, additionally, the, the points now paginate you one at a time versus just kind of speed scrolling you through stuff. 
Right now, uh, I can't reorganize anything in here because it crashes Chrome OS. Again, this is a developer channel, but you can see new folders uh, that look exactly, again, like what you'd see on the Pixel, Pixel 2, that kind of stuff. So anything running Android Pie right now. Um, so ostensibly, you'd be able to drag stuff around and create folders. Again, I can't do that right now without crashing the entire system. But everything else in here is pretty much unchanged. Um, the, the scrolling feels way better than it has um, up until this point. But the app tray in general uh, just looks like it belongs here now um, and, and it feels better than it did before. This all becomes even more interesting when we flip into tablet mode. So, yeah, that happened. So, there is no getting away from the app tray basically when you're in tablet mode. So, you kind of got to think of it more like you're holding one of these kind of tablets. And so when I go to the home screen, for instance, on this tablet, you get the same thing. So this is the Acer Chromebook Tab 10. And the reason I'm not showing you a lot of the stuff on this device is it's really struggling with uh, the dev channel right now. So performance is real bad over here. Uh, but this is kind of your home screen. Now, I'm going to change to something, hopefully not flip out the, uh, the camera too much. I'm going to try to change to something that's just more textured. Uh, and less busy in the background. And the reason I'm gonna do that, and I think that at least for now, uh, maybe this is a better option for the way that they've got this. Really nice transition there, by the way. I'm gonna set the wallpaper, that helps a little bit. Uh, it helps the icons just kind of pop up off there. I'm not really sure what they're gonna do with this. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the completely transparent tray. I like the fact that when it's in uh, clamshell mode, it kind of blurs that background. It makes these icons pop. They kind of get lost and, and it doesn't seem to matter what I put in the background. It's kind of hard to see them. And so my guess is they're probably working on a solution to that. Maybe either dimming the background a little bit or they're gonna lightly blur it. I, I, I'm just not sure what they're gonna do with this. But for the time being, it looks like this launcher is kind of a fixed situation when you're in tablet mode and that's not really the worst thing. It, it, it kind of is nice to have these things up here uh, similar to the way an iPad would, would function or an Android tablet would function. There's stuff on the screen all the time instead of just kind of having this big blank space that really doesn't do anything. Um, and so the other thing that's a little weird with this kind of transparency in tablet mode, if I open up an instance of Chrome and honestly it doesn't matter what I open up, anything I open up the bar is not getting dark down here anymore um, and that is just off-putting to me like this should be solid colored instead of showing the background my guess is that's probably a bug they just haven't fixed that just yet uh, but this is a nice segue into the next piece and that's how we deal with multitasking on these things so now things start to get really interesting so we're going to talk about how Chrome OS is starting to handle multitasking. And again, this is dev, so some of this stuff could change. We're probably gonna see even more features. And as I move through some of this, you might see some hiccups and stutters in the animation. Remember, this is stuff that is work in progress, but it's a really cool sign of where we're going with this stuff. And so they've they've taken some things from, from Windows, which I feel like did tablet mode pretty well, especially with multitasking, because uh, iPad actually pulled from some of that stuff too. They're taking some of those little pieces and, and kind of putting it together their own way. And it's it's actually really cool and very satisfying to use so far. Again, don't pay attention to the, the transparent bar down here. I, I feel like that's gonna go away. But for now, that's, that's what it is. So say I've got an instance of Chrome uh, running here and then, okay, we got files, app, I've got Allo, um, I've got Chrome Unbox that I turned into a, a web app. Um, I just downloaded it and uh, opened it up um, and Google Playbooks. So we've got all of those apps running. So now say I'm here and I'm holding the device and I just want to maybe either go side by side or see what all I've got open. You can notice there's no top bar anymore. So there's no X and minus anything. Everything's just nice and full screen, which is really cool. Uh, that's a, a big benefit here. So how do you minimize uh, your, your application? You simply drag from the top and you kind of get this floating window drop it in its space. Now you have this familiar multitasking screen that we've had for a little while now. But the cool thing from this is now I can long press one of these, drag it to the side, drop it in there, and then go, uh, I need um, Chrome Unboxed open. And as we've been able to do before, you can resize. And so now we've got an Android app and a Chrome OS uh, app running over here next to one another. When we're done with either one of them, again, drag down, drop here, choose the one I want, or we can drag this one down as well, put him back over there. When I'm done with these, similar again to what you do in Android, just flick them away. 
and they're gone. And most of that animated really, really well. So, uh, well done on on this. This is a big change. Like when we're in clamshell mode, moving windows around is you know that's just normal for everyone at this point. Window interfaces are pretty standard. But tablet interfaces and multitasking are not something that a lot of people have done right. And I think uh, Apple and, and Microsoft deserve some credit for the things that they've done up to this point. And I'm glad Google is kind of taking some of those things and working them into Chrome OS at this point because the tablet mode has needed some love and it looks like it's finally getting it. So last but not least, I want to talk about probably my favorite feature in this slew of updates and that is the keyboard. The on-screen keyboard for Chromebooks has been passable. It's not been great, it's not been terrible, just okay, um, but it's not really been a joy to use. This changes that. So if I go up here and I go to type, keyboard comes up, and I can use this keyboard, but grabbing it here, it's really far and spaced out, and it just doesn't feel natural at all. If this were a tablet and I was holding it, it feels pretty gross. Um, all the normal stuff still here, so most of that stuff hasn't changed. So you've got your handwriting stuff, you've got your basic settings, and you got your voice input, which, by the way, it you would expect it to, but it works really, really, really well. But now there's this new button here, and that's what happens. You get this floating keyboard that's nice and small and can go anywhere and always stays on top of everything. And so as you're filling out things, so if I have it here and I type here and I start typing, it didn't move. Oh, this is Google. So... Uh, let's hit enter and go in here. So now I'm clicking here again and boom, pops back up and I'm typing, even if it's over top of that, type, 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 doesn't matter. It moves and does anything I need it to do until I hit return and it goes and it goes away all by itself until it needs it again and it brings it up. Or I can dismiss it just like that. It's brilliant, it works so, so well. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about it. I haven't had any issues with it. It moves around smooth everywhere it needs to go. You have swipe functionality. The only thing it's missing from something like Gboard would be like, you know, GIF support and stickers. It's got basic emojis, uh, which is, is fine. But um, to get some of the GIF support in the keyboard would be awesome. And it seems like so much work is being done on this keyboard now with this kind of floating setup uh, and the ability to use it this way that who knows, I we all thought that they were just gonna replace this with Gboard. Maybe they're gonna keep this and just port Gboard's features into this. And if that's the case, that's fine. It is working that well. And I'm so pleased with using this thing uh, that I hope it kind of sticks around because it's just so brilliant to be able to move your keyboard no matter where the, the place is that you need to be typing text. You can just kind of move this keyboard out of the way and type and, and swipe or whatever you wanna do or voice dictate and get it out of the way. It's it's just excellent. So well well done, uh, Google, on the keyboard. And honestly, for most of this stuff, again, I know it's mostly in development, well done on all of it. Uh, all these things moving forward, I, I just didn't see any of this stuff coming immediately, and I for sure did not see all of this stuff coming all at once. And so we're really starting to get a picture of what Chrome OS is gonna start looking like uh, as, as 2018 moves forward, and especially for devices like Nocturne that we expect to see in October. All these developments as they kind of come and, and cohese together and, and, and give us a, a more complete picture of Chrome OS, it's going to look really awesome uh, on a really high-end, high-spec tablet type device. I cannot wait to see it. I cannot wait not only just to see that hardware, but to see this software running on it as well. And guys, that's about it for this thing. Uh, hopefully, if you have a device that has uh, Chrome OS 70 in the developer channel, you Take the leap, jump over, switch over to the developer channel, play with some of this stuff and see some of these new features. If not, I'm sure 70 will be coming to a lot of devices pretty soon. And the ones that have clamshell or tablet mode, uh, you'll be able to actually use some of these features and kind of start playing around with this stuff before it shows up in October. But that's about it for this one, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and until next time, we'll see you.